Hey, I'm Sophie and welcome to my video. I am on a 4,500 kilometer journey from the south to the north of China. Let me get you caught up. I started at my home in Shenzhen and have already made some stops in Hangzhou, Shanghai. Watch my previous videos to see what I got up to. And I am currently sleeping overnight in Beijing airport, ready to catch my flight to Harbin. Harbin is the capital city of Heilongjiang province in the northeast of China. Now enough talking, let's get into the video. It's snow. Oh my god, I'm going to cry. This is the breakfast that I had on the plane. It has some watermelon, some yogurt, this little mochi. As we are arriving, Harbin is experiencing record-breaking low temperatures. Oh my gosh. It's already pretty cold. Are our extra warm clothes ready for when we go out to the airport? It's minus 28 degrees. But feels like... Minus 34. Yeah. Luckily at the airport, they have these little booths where you can get changed and put on your super warm thermal clothes. As you can see, I layered up. We are about to go outside for the first time. I'm so nervous. This is the coldest weather that I have ever been in in my life. As soon as we got outside, we scrambled to get in the first taxi that we could see. As we're driving through the city, we see these incredible ice sculptures at the side of the roads. There is a lot of Russian influence in Harbin because it was originally a Russian-built settlement. We arrived at the hotel. It looked a little bit sketchy, but we were just so eager to get inside and out of the cold. Here is our hotel room. Let's get in the bathroom, shower. Hello. It's Project. As you can see, we were not taking the temperature lightly. This is no joke. Unfortunately, the cold won, and we just ran into the closest place that we could see, which was a McDonald's. Somewhere we can sit where our fingers are not going to fall off. My mascara is melting. It's all on my mask. But this is not your regular Western McDonald's meal. Bamboo, vegetables and chicken. Hope I will enjoy it. It has a lot of icing, it's not cold. But actually in this area, you don't feel cold at all. Huh. It's, it's quite outside. warm actually, maybe. <laughs> and I had this taro pie. It's so crispy on the outside and hot in the middle, full of the sweet taro. Delicious. The ladies just use English, fluent English, to uh, tell us what's interesting around here. Yeah, she drew a little map for us and recommended some places that people don't usually go to. That really shows the history of the, like, the city. So lovely, really sweet. It's time to brave the cold again as we go outside and look for the metro station. There are so many street food vendors around, we will definitely be coming back here. Okay, we walked outside for like 10 minutes and we are freezing. It's like my body is fine, but my fingers are pretty cold and my nose. Um, so we're going to take the metro and go to the ice festival. Woo! Here is the metro station. It's so different to others that I've seen in China. Is it 
Mm-hmm. Tickets secured, we make our way to what we are most excited for, the Snow and Ice Festival. When winter comes, Harbin really turns into a kingdom of ice and snow. This thermometer says that it is minus 17 degrees, but let me tell you, our weather app said it was a lot colder than that. We're at the ice festival. This is all made out of apps. Ah. <laughs> Here they have so many huge sculptures made from ice and snow, and the festival lasts for about two months. In early December, a traditional ice harvest ceremony is held on the frozen solid Songhua River in Harbin. From then on, thousands of workers cut and collect ice blocks from the river, and artists carve and connect the blocks together to create various sculptures or buildings. In about three to four weeks, Harbin is transformed into a winter wonderland. Because of the extreme cold, you have to go in quite often. So we came inside and thought we would have some little food. Luckily, this place has a lot of halls where you can go in and grab some food. This is barbecue. And you can even see they have century egg. What is it? Some barbecue. I went for these cute little sticks of corn and Michelle has a sausage. As we brave the cold and head outside again, we find these super cute little sledges. It was actually way more difficult than it looks, even though I'm not making it look very easy. <laughs> After just being outside for five minutes, Michelle's hair and scarf is already frozen. Is it cold? Cold. <laughs> My hair is a whole so hot. No, I'm not warm, I'm cold. How cold? <laughs> And let's warm up with a hot milk tea. We got a milk tea. Mm -hmm. What flavour is it? Uh, peach oolong tea. So warm. As we took it outside, it spilled onto our gloves and it was instantly frozen to make milk tea ice cream on our gloves. So crazy. The festival has a lot of activities that you can do, such as ride on a ferris wheel and even go down a huge slide made out of ice. But because there's so many visitors, you have to get in an online queue and race to book a ticket. We tried so many times. Fortunately, we were finally able to get a slot for the ferris wheel. Even the ferris wheel is completely frozen. We have the best seats in the house to watch this car show where the cars are driving so fast and skidding around on the ice. <laughs> and just look at this view. Doesn't it look spectacular with all of the lights? We decided to brave the cold one last time. Can you believe the ice is completely crystal clear? By this time, the temperature had dropped down to minus 24 degrees C. Feels like minus 32. Even the condensation in my nose was frozen. Chrissy? Is it ice? Oh, it's a beach. I think it's frozen beach. <laughs> Oh, my God.
Look at this show. Cantonese you cannot deal with this. Really. We're like we're breathing in ice. And we're breathing out ice too. And my snot is turning into ice. So we're gonna go home. It's too cold. I don't wanna lose a finger. Uh, I think I already lost some. So we headed on out through the gift shop. They have so many Russian sweets and treats here. We took the metro back to Zhongyan Street. So what is Zhongyan Street? Well, it's a Russian street in the area full of little Russian bakeries and shops. The glistening ice and the sparkling lights and lanterns really give me fairy grotto vibes. We want to have a look around, but it's so cold that every two minutes outside, we have to quickly run into a shop. But I'm not complaining. We ended up buying these really cool Russian chocolates and biscuits. We're hungry, we're freezing, and we need something to warm us up from the inside out. And what could be better than Dong Bay Malatang? To really show you the difference between the temperature inside and outside, look what happens when you open the door to this restaurant. It's like an avalanche of cold air comes rushing in. So sorry that the following videos are a little blurry. My camera was completely steamed up. So you take a tray and grab what you want to put in your malatang. They have so many vegetables and different meats and lots of things I've never seen before. I grabbed a lot of tofu. And here is a century egg. We mix up all of that delicious sauce and then start serving out the food into two smaller bowls. We make sure to add some of the soup in so we can really get all of that flavour. You can see it's quite thick from the peanut sauce. Starch sausage. Oh. Yeah. 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 The noodles are so cold, but they're worth it. Mm. <laughs> Quite hot. The noodles are nice as well. Mm. Mm. Oh my gosh, so good. I would like to say this is the best malakal in this room. I hope they will have some in Shenzhen, which tastes really similar to this. Too rich, like sometimes when you have peanut sauce, it's too like heavy, like, makes you feel a bit sick, like sickly. It just feels not like that. 
As we're eating our way to the bottom of the bowl, we're discovering things we forgot we even put in, like this broccoli. And now it's time to tackle the century egg. Century egg. Never tried this before. How is it? It's nice. I like it. I didn't like it before. What does it taste like? It smells just kind of strong, like so far. Like I Do you know what? We used to watch. A, I used to watch a video. It's about uh, ten main things that foreigners cannot accept. This is one of them. It's kind of like jelly texture. Mm. Um, it tastes like how egg smells, but not really how like normal egg tastes. It just tastes like very egg smell. Mm. So do you like it or not? Maybe I wouldn't like go out and look for it to buy it, but it's not bad. It's not like it's not really like a strong taste. Really, people say it's so strong. Really? Maybe I've got COVID. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. It's okay, but you can finish it. Well, that means no, it's okay, but. Mm, I think there's nicer things that I want to focus on finishing from this huge bowl of food. I want to focus on my broccoli. So this concludes our day in Harbin. Make sure to come back next week and check out our videos. As always, thank you for watching and see you again next time. Bye!